Hey, welcome back to the eDrum Workshop. I'm Luke, and today Korg have unveiled a new drums and percussion sampling multipad, the MPS-10. Now, there's not a ton of information out there about this pad yet, and I've only found one demo video as of time of recording, but it looks pretty interesting, so let's take a look at what Korg say this brand new multipad brings to the table. So Korg says that the MPS-10 meets the diverse demands of drummers and percussionists everywhere, the usual marketing speak, but as you can tell from this picture there are 10 pads in total so there's four across the top four on the middle row and then two over on the sides of the interface and right away i'm looking at this and i kind of don't like the design now this might just be due to my familiarity with other sample pads but there's just something really jarring about having the interface in the middle of a couple of the pads since i haven't used this i can't say that this is definitely a bad design but one thing that i do know is that i'm prone to just smacking the screens on these things even when they're out of the way i had my original sbdsx for one day before i hit the screen with a stick. However, feel free to call that a personal failing rather than a product failing. But otherwise, aesthetically, I mean, it's doing something a little bit different to the other sample pads, which is, you know, always a plus as far as I'm concerned. An extra pad compared to the SPDSX is not to be sniffed at, and it's definitely taken a lot of visual cues from the new SX Pro or the Strike Multipad with these coloured LEDs between all of the pads. Ooh, I hope they close that door. God damn drummers. The screen is a colour screen which is absolutely welcome these days and there are the usual controls for what you would expect such as the volume, the headphone volume, the metronome, a data wheel to change some values, plus and minus for the kit, and then there are menu controls and some additional controls down at the bottom here for the looper. So just from looking at it, you can tell that that's obviously going to be a large selling point to this particular model. So taking a look at the back panel, there's a headphones out, there's a master or main out left and right, which seemingly can be summed to mono if you choose to just plug in the left, and there are also two sub outs here. Now I'm really hoping that Korg have included some decent routing here. The original SPDSX had two sub outputs but the routing was surprisingly limited for those. They did fix the routing on the SX Pro but hopefully Korg have just got it right first time here. Next you've got a couple of inputs. There's a stereo line input and a microphone input. So much like the SPDSX you can directly sample into the pad. Next up there are two dual zone trigger inputs. It seems like you can either use a dual zone pad or you can use a splitter to include up to four pads and I'm just really hoping that the trigger settings are robust enough to easily support any manufacturer's pads. Next up there are two foot switch input and an expression pedal input which is nice to see and then there's a DIN MIDI out. I'm a little bit disappointed that there's not a DIN MIDI in here. There is a USB port here labeled 2PC which I imagine means it's a generic MIDI device so that should handle MIDI in and out over USB but it means that if you want a MIDI in without a computer, you're going to have to use something like a USB MIDI host. That's a little bit of a shame on a unit such as this. There's also a USB input for flash drives, and there's the usual power input. A bit further down the page, it explains that this was developed by the design team behind WaveDrum and the Pearl Emerge. Now, I have very briefly tried out the Pearl Emerge, and I didn't really gel with the actual kit itself, but I don't think that triggering was something that stood out as being bad to me. So I'm really hoping that that means that the face pads and the external triggers perform really well with this unit. There's also a little bit more information about the external triggers here. So it's pictured with Pearl Emerge pads. And yes, it says accommodating up to four trigger pads via a Y-shaped cable. And this puts the trigger inputs on par with the original Roland SPDSX model. Going back up the page a little bit, we get some more information about the sounds. And it says with an expansive collection of 2,350 assignable instruments, in brackets, inst pads, and more than 3,000 high quality samples at your disposal. I'm very interested by the distinction there between instruments and samples. It goes on to say the MPS 10 opens up the gateway to boundless creativity, marketing, marketing, revel in a deep library of cool, useful sounds that range from dynamically expressive instrument tones and captivatingly nuanced variations based on your strikes intensity to the essential electric instrument sounds that drive so much modern drumming. So what I can glean from that and what I'm hoping is the case 
is that there are instruments in there that have multiple sample layers and expressive qualities and then there are also one-shot samples i'm really hoping that that means at some point they're going to let you build your own instruments however that might just be me getting my hopes up but being able to create multi-layered instruments would really put this above pretty much any other sample pad on the market. And before the Yamaha fans bite my head off, yes, I know that the DTX Multi-12 can layer up to four sounds per pad, but I want more. So then it goes on to blow its own trumpet about the sounds, which, you know, that's fine. Then it explains that there are 100 stock kits included, and there are also 100 user kit slots, so that puts it on par with the SX Pro. And then it goes on to talk about the effects, and then something that they're touting as a selling point, which is smooth sound transition. So it says here that that in ensures flawless kit transitions after striking a cymbal or repeating a sample such as a snare. Basically what this boils down to is if you hit a sample and then change the kit, it won't instantly cut the sound off, which is great. After this they go on to talk about the looper capabilities, which actually look really robust. The one demo video that I've seen really demonstrates that well, so I'll link to that below. Now to me, this next feature is probably the best call it innovation of this pad in my opinion as long as it works the way that they're saying it does the top four pads can be used as cc pads so they can detect the striking position apparently with incredible precision and that allows you to control effects parameters or when paired with a computer or different software presumably you can control all kinds of things with this so they talk about using it for gradual filtering edm inspired drum rolls with note delay and real-time tonal transformations through through the versatile multi effects functions. So, if this is as accurate as they're saying, you should be able to get quite detailed nuances between the left and right side of these pads. And again, the demo video that I'll link to actually does very briefly show off some filtering all the way across the top four pads, which was quite interesting. That definitely opens up some expressive and functionality options that just aren't available on other multi pads. So, I'm very interested in seeing how people come to use that over time. Next up, they talk about the sampler function, and it seems like you can either import things from a USB flash drive or you could sample directly into the unit which is brilliant and then they brag a little bit about the full color display which shouldn't really be a selling point in 2023 going into 2024 but here we are. Next up, there's a couple of screenshots here of the editor, which unfortunately are quite low resolution. I've tried blowing them up a bit, but uh, it just seems that they're about this big. So here I've zoomed in a bit. It's a little bit grainy, but you can get an idea of what kind of things are available to tweak on the editor. It doesn't look anywhere near as robust as the SPDSX Pro editor. You know, you can adjust things like the level, the pan, the pitch, and the mode, which at the moment there's normal, normal, exclusive one exclusive one without a manual or some kind of demonstration i don't really know what that means and then these are the four external trigger inputs on the bottom and there's also an expression pedal one here there are a couple of interesting little details here though all across the top here there are crash 2 18 inch plus bd1 ride bow 20 plus bd3 so it seems that they've paired all of their symbols with bass drums there which would be a pretty handy thing to do when you drumming with just your hands but what i can't tell from that alone is whether these are two instruments that are baked in together or whether you're able to pair up instruments yourself on one pad and then next up there's an image which shows you the cc pad configurations so you've got things like transposition note delay multi-effects on or off and a filter so here it's set up as a low pass filter and i'm wondering whether each of those pad icons are the four across the top and then you can control whether it goes across all four of those pads or whether you choose just to confine it to say two like on this image so over on the specifications page it tells you that the maximum polyphony is 48 voices which i believe is pretty competitive with the sx pro there are 200 kits including the user kit 2,358 instruments, 3,000 samples, and 77 effects, which is, you know, a fair amount. Again, a run-through of all the different jacks and ports, which we've already covered. And there's 32 gigabyte of internal memory. So that puts it up there with the SPD-SX Pro and the Elisa Strike Multipad. It can support WAV and AIFF at 44.1 kHz or 48 kHz at 16-bit. To be honest, for live performing and, and all of your uses with this, 16-bit's fine. Then you've got the display, the operating temperature, 
power supply, dimensions, weight, and the included items, which are the AC adapter and the quick start guide. As far as prices go, in the UK, on the Korg store, it's up at £949. On Sweetwater for the US, it's listed at $999. And then this GearNews.com article has it down at €1,099 Euros for Europe. So price-wise, it appears to be somewhere between the original model of the SPDSX and the SPDSX Pro in most territories. Although you can actually get the SPDSX Pro cheaper than that in the UK now at least. Which is interesting, I mean, there's definitely an argument to be made that it should be priced somewhere between the original SPDSX and the new Pro because it kind of has a mixture of features features that put it in that sort of bracket. It's basically got all of the input and output features of the original SX, but it's got more memory. On the other hand, the SPD-SX Pro now has more trigger inputs and more outputs than that, the same amount of memory, and it also has some features that are better, like layering, but others that aren't as good. My overall impressions of this on a very surface level is that it seems like quite a safe option. There's a lot of tried and tested functionality in there, but then the looper and the CC pads give it a competitive edge. What I do find kind of interesting Interesting though is that some of the more unique features of the wave drum don't appear to be in there. Things like touch muting and pitch bending. I would have hoped that since it's developed by that team that those sort of things would have made their way onto this pad. But at least again on the surface it doesn't appear to be the case. The biggest downside for me at the moment is just the overall shape. Just because I'm really worried about that screen placement. I don't think that the horizontal configuration is bad overall. But I don't know whether maybe I'd just prefer to have two extra pads where the screen is and then have the screen below. But of course, that would fundamentally be a big change. And then the feature that I'm personally most interested in finding out more about is this whole instrument and sample distinction. If there is a way to design, build, or import your own instruments that contain multiple samples or articulations, that actually might be a game changer in the multipad world. If there's no plans to make this into a feature, Korg, I implore you, just make it into a feature. Otherwise, it's nice to see a multipad that's got to focus on some slightly different features and hopefully that at least makes it a competitive option for some people if those features appeal to you in particular. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments and if you want to know more about the Roland SPDSX Pro and what features I think really improved it over the original model, check out this video right here. If you want any samples that are compatible with your multipad, check out my elements packs over on the eDrumworkshop.com and above all enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers!